Yo, what's up, Pre-Calc? Uh, today we're going to go uh, a little bit further into parabolas. Um, in the previous video, if you remember, you know, we gave you um, the formula of the, of the parabola in standard form, and you were able to find key features and graph. Today we're going to take it a little bit further. Today I'm going to give you an equation and you need to put it into standard parabolic form on your own and then go ahead and find key features and graphs. So it's just one extra step. This step can be a little bit confusing. It's called completing the square. Also, I'm going to be giving you questions today where instead of me giving you the formula and you graph, I'm going to give you a couple parts of a parabola and then you need to figure out what the equation of that parabola is. All right, so let's get after it here. Um, these are the steps to put equation into standard parabolic form. You want to separate your x's and y's. Um, the constant, if you don't know what a constant is, a constant is a, non, is a number without a variable. That's going to go on the opposite side of your squared variable. You're going to have to do something called completing the square. I will show you that. It's kind of confusing just by looking at this, but I'll get into that. Um, you want to factor that perfect square, and you want to factor out a coefficient, if you can, on the opposite side. Okay, I would write these steps down or just have them out in front of you while you're doing this. Um, but here we go. So write x squared minus 4y plus 3 equals 7 in standard form. Identify vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, and directrix, and then graph it. We did all that before in the last video. The only thing is I got to get this to look like my, uh, you know, x minus h squared plus 4fl times y minus k kind of thing, right? That same uh, formula that I gave you uh, in the last video. So here we go. I'm starting right here with x squared minus 4y plus 3 equals 7. Remember our first step was to kind of split up our x's and y's. Um, so I'm going to go x squared. I'm going to move the 4y over, so I'm going to add 4y to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 3 over. So it's going to be x squared equals 4y, right, because I added 4y to both sides. Subtract 3 from both sides, and I get plus 4. Notice my x's and my y's are split up, and my constant is on the side opposite of my squared value. Remember, we have to try and factor if we can. I can factor out a 4 here, so I get x squared equals 4 times y plus 1. Now, this is starting to look a lot like um, our normal formula. I could theoretically, couldn't I just say that x squared is just x minus 0 squared? Yeah, I could, right? Um, so that 0 is going to be the x coordinate of your vertex. But that looks weird, so I'm going to go back and just call it x squared. Now that I have my formula, now it's the exact same thing as the last video. You're going to find all these different key features, and then you're going to graph it. So I'm going to start with my vertex here. And just for room, I'm going to start writing them over here. Vertex looks like it's going to be 0, comma, negative 1. Um, I know that this parabola is opening vertically because my x value is the one that's being squared. Um, not only that, but I have a positive here, so I know it's going to open up. So I'm just going to write myself a note. It's opening up. Um, looks like my focal length, my focal length, remember this number right here is equal to 4 times your focal length. Well, so, oh boy. So 4 equals 4FL, right? We said this is equal to 4FL. Divide both by 4, and my focal length is just 1. So now that I know my focal length is 1, my vertex, I know where that is, and I know it's opening up. Now I can start to graph this and then figure out the rest. So let's draw a coordinate plane. OK. Um, my vertex is at 0, negative 1, so right here, there's my vertex. My focal length is 1, and I know it's opening up, so I'm going to move up one unit. And so my focus is going to be there. Not only that, but if my focal length is 1, that means I'm moving up 1 to my focus, but I'm also moving down 1, and that should be where my directrix is. 
Remember the length between the vertex and the focal length, or the, the vertex and the directrix should be the same as the vertex and the focus. I can start filling out some more information here. Now, um, I know my axis of symmetry is going to go right down the middle here because it's opening up. So I can start coming up with more answers now. So I can say my directrix, directrix is the line y equals negative 2, right? This horizontal line, y equals negative 2. I know my axis of symmetry is this uh, vertical line at 0, or x equals 0. So we have axis of symmetry done. Um, my focus is this coordinate right here at 0, 0. So that's done. We already got our vertex. We already got our directrix, everything. We have all our kind of answers here. Now I just have to go ahead and finish graphing. I'll, I've said it before and I'll say it again. We need three points. If you do not have three points, you're not going to get full credit. In order to find these two points on the sides, we got to go back to that whole lattice rectum thing. We know that the lattice rectum is equal to the absolute value of four times the focus length. Basically, two times the focus length should be to the left of the focus. Two times the focus length should be to the right of the focus. Well, my, fo my focal length is one. We said that. So I'm just going to scoot over here. I'm going to go two units to the right and two units to the left. Now I have my vertex and my two points right here. Draw my parabola. So really, it's not that much new stuff you're learning today. It's just the only really new thing is getting it into standard parabolic form so that you can do all the same stuff you did yesterday. All right? Let's move on. Come on now. This is being really laggy, I apologize. Okay, here we go. Now this one's gonna be more of what you're actually gonna see. This is kind of your standard question, okay, as far as how, how challenging it is. Same idea though, here we go, here's my formula. Let's get that into standard form first. So now you're, you're, you're really gonna wanna pay attention on this one because this can get a little confusing. X squared minus eight X minus Y equals negative 18. Okay, we need to split our x's and y's, so I'm going to move the y over. x squared minus 8x equals y minus 18. Now, this is when you need to complete the square. Notice I have this, right? This is not in the form x minus h, right? Or, or sorry, x minus h squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this x squared minus 8x, and I need to turn that into x plus or minus something. I don't know what it is. Let's do a question mark squared. I need it to ultimately look like that. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my b term, okay? You know, your a term is in front of the uh, x squared. This is my b term. I'm going to take my b term. Okay, I need to cut that in half, and then I need to square it and add it to both sides. Okay, I need to take my B term, cut it in half, square it, and add it to both sides. So check this out. My B term is negative 8, so negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go x squared minus 8x plus 16. Notice I've added 16 to the left side, so I need to add 16 to the right side. So that's y minus 18 plus 16. Okay. If you need to pause the video and rewind it, go for it. But this is an important start or important step. 
Remember, take your B term, cut it in half, square it, add it to both sides. Now I'm just going to simplify a little bit. This turns out now, the whole reason we're doing this, completing the square now, is now I can factor that to just x minus 4, x minus 4. Right? If you were to multiply those back together, you'd get the original. Simplify this side, y minus 18 plus 16, these are like terms, so it's really y minus 2. But check this out now. x minus 4 times x minus 4. Isn't that the same thing as x minus 4 squared? Yes, it is. Equals y minus 2. Now we have this in a form here. I can't factor that. Right? If you could factor that, but now I have this in standard parabolic form. Now I can go ahead and do all the rest of the stuff that we've been doing. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and remember this real quick. I'm going to write it down on my whiteboard. Because we're going to delete this here. So we had it down to x minus 4 squared equals y minus 2. From here, it should be a, the same thing you've already done, right? Um, if you want to pause it and go try this on your own, go for it. If not, we're going to solve it real quick. So here we go. Draw my coordinate plane. And let's start getting some information down. Um, I know my... First of all, I know that this is going to be a vertical parabola because I have the x being squared. I know it's going to be moving up because I have a positive. Really, there's a positive 1 here if you want to think about it. Um, so I know it's going to move up. I know it's going to be vertical, so let's go from there. My vertex looks like it's going to be just 4, 2, right? 4, 2. So let's graph that. 2, 3, 4. One, two, vertex. Um, my focal length, this is going to be a little tricky here. This one is equal to four times your focal length, remember, divide by four. So your focal length is one fourth, which is kind of going to be hard to graph. Since I know uh, it's moving up, or sorry, I know that the parabola is opening upward, that means my Focus is just going to be one quarter of a unit above, and my directrix is going to be one quarter of a unit below. Okay, so if I'm going to go ahead and write the coordinates of my focus, looks like it's going to be one, two, three, four, comma, two and a fourth, right? Because it's moved up one quarter of a unit. My directrix is going to be this line at y equals uh, 1 and 3 quarters, right? Or you could say 1.75, right, because it's gone down a quarter of a unit. Axis of symmetry, you know, it's just going to be this vertical line. At x equals 4. So I got the axis symmetry, directrix, focus, vertex. Now we just need to graph. We need those three points. Um, since my focal length is 1 fourth, remember your lattice rectum is 4 times your focal length, 2 times your focal length to the right, 2 times your focal length to the left of the focus. Well, that's only going to be a half a unit because 1 fourth times 2 is a half. So maybe over here over here, and there's my graph. All right, but that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, for these ones, again, just make sure you know how to complete the square. After that, it's the same stuff you've already been doing. So I would urge you guys to do those worksheets on Canvas. I would also urge you guys to do the assignments out of the book. The more practice, the easier this is going to get. Okay, now we're going to kind of shift gears a little bit. Now it's going to be me giving you a piece of information 
and you coming up with your own equation. Okay, let's just skip through this stuff. This is all everything I already explained. Looks pretty good. So this is what I was talking about. I'm giving you information now, and you need to come up with the equation. So let's just take a look at it. Write equation four and graph a parabola with a focus at two comma one. So that's a key part of information and a vertex of negative five comma one. All right, so I'm just gonna start by graphing those points. Draw a coordinate plane here. Um, my focus is at two comma one. So right here is my focus. My vertex is at negative five comma one. One, two, three, four, five. So right away, I know some, some information. If my focus is to the right of my vertex, I know it's going to be a horizontal parabola, and I know that my, that part where it says 4FL is going to be positive. So I'm just going to start writing kind of a shell of my equation. I know it's going to be a horizontal parabola, so I know it's going to be y plus or minus something squared equals a positive number, whatever that is, x something. Let's check it out. You know, I can figure out what my focal length is, right? Just by counting the distance from my vertex to my focus. Remember we said that's the focal length. Well, looks like it went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my focal length is seven. So that's my FL. So four times my focal length is what goes right here. We said my focal length was seven units. So there should be a 28 right here, okay? Um, also, I know my vertex already is negative five comma one, so my x right here should be plus five. My y should be minus one. Um, that's pretty much it. We have our equation of our parabola in standard form right there. That's all, that's all it took. And then we just wanna graph it. Um, so I have my vertex and my focus. Remember, I need three points. Um, the lattice rectum, remember, is going to go through the focus like this. Two, two times the focal length above, two times the focal length below. My focal length is seven, um, so it's going to be 14 units above. One, two, three. It's going to be way up there somewhere. 14 units below, down here somewhere. And that's what my parabola will look like. Okay. But just from these pieces of information, you should be able to kind of piece together your equation. Let's see what we got here. I think that's pretty much all we got. Um, this, these slides are going to go ahead and explain what I just explained. And then we're going to see the graph right here in a second. There you go. They changed their spacing or their scaling so it's a little bit easier to see. Just another example of kind of what I was doing here. That's pretty much it. So that's everything on parabolas. Again, please, if you have any questions, reach out to your teachers. We will be more than happy to help you. Um, you guys only have one more section of, um, I think it's ellipses next, and then you're done with this craziness that is the 2020 school year. So uh, good luck with everything. If you have questions, 